The Rising Storm, Star Wars, the High Republic series by Kevin Scott. Perilous Missions. Udidis navigated the treacherous Riston Badlands, driven by duty and his connection to the Force. The icy landscape stretched out before him like an endless white canvas, punctuated by colliding planetoids and razor-sharp shards that threatened to tear him apart at any moment. He trudged through the snow, his wing blades heavy on his back, each step a trial against the howling gale and biting cold. The wind whipped his face, stinging his eyes with ice crystals, and the sound of creaking ice echoed through the desolate expanse. Stay alert, Udi, he muttered to himself, scanning the horizon for any signs of predators lurking in the ice flats. His breath fogged in the chill air as he spoke, and his feathers ruffled against the cold. Suddenly Kufa emerged from the whiteness, her weathered face a map of wrinkles, her eyes gleaming with a deep understanding of the harsh environment. She wore layers of furs, cinched tight against the wind, and carried a glow rod that cast an eerie light on the surrounding ice. This way, young one, she said, leading him towards a rocky outcrop in the distance. As they approached the outcrop, Udi sensed that something was off. The air seemed to vibrate with an otherworldly energy, and he could feel the weight of ancient relics calling to him from within the petrified stone. The rock itself seemed to hum with power, its surface at strange symbols that glowed faintly in the dim light. Meanwhile, back on the cloud ship, Bell struggled to come to terms with the loss of Master Loden. The grief gnawed at his insides like a festering wound, leaving him feeling empty and restless. He longed for revenge against those responsible for Loden's death, but Indira's wise words echoed in his mind. A Jedi must not let emotions rule their actions. He stood on the edge of the landing platform, his eyes fixed on the swirling vortex of bronze scav droids streaming towards him like a deadly tide. Bell, we have incoming, a voice shouted from the comm system. Ember, his charhound companion, growled softly beside him, sensing his unease. With a deep breath, Bell focused on the force, sensing the gaps in the droid's formation. He charted a path through them, using his lightsaber training to guide him. Ember stayed close by his side as he leapt into action, dodging and weaving between the scav droids, his lightsaber a blur of motion. We'll make it through this, Ember, he assured his companion. Even as the harpoon pierced the vector's hull, a stark reminder of the Nile's deadly intent. Udi Dis, meanwhile, reached the rocky outcrop, his breath forming clouds in the frigid air. Kufa pointed to the cleft in the stone. Here lies the secret of the Badlands, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the wind. Udi stepped closer, his hand reaching out to touch the cold stone, feeling the pulse of the force grow stronger. What is this place? Udi asked, his voice filled with awe. Kufa smiled, her eyes reflecting the light of distant stars. A vault of history, young Jedi. Artifacts of the ancients hidden from the Nile's greed. Udi's eyes widened as he realized the significance of their discovery. This could change the course of their battle against the Nile. As Bell fought off the last of the scav droids, he felt a surge of hope. The Force was with them. And with the newfound relics, they had a chance to turn the tide against the darkness that threatened to engulf the galaxy. Together, Udi and Bell would face whatever challenges lay ahead, their spirits unbroken, their resolve as strong as the ancient rocks that held the secrets of the past. And then, a sudden gust of wind swept through the Badlands, extinguishing the remaining light sources and plunging the area into darkness. Just as Udi struggled to regain his footing, a figure emerged from the shadows, clad in dark robes that billowed around them like wings. The newcomer's presence exuded an aura of power and authority, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly intensity. Confronting loss and danger. Bell Zedifar was a beacon of focus at the helm of the innovator, his hands maneuvering with precision as the Nile starfighters swarmed. Indira's voice cut through, focus, Bell, use what he taught you. With a nod, Bell channeled his training into action, weaving through the enemy's onslaught with a dancer's grace. Ty Yorick, on the ground, 
was a force of nature against the Drenger. Her lightsaber hummed in her grip, a testament to her resolve as she cleaved through the attacking vines. Is that all you've got? She challenged, her voice echoing defiance. The innovator's crew sprang into action as the hyperspace proximity alarm blared. Incoming! Bell announced, the crew working in unison to pivot the ship away from the emerging Nihil threat. Their practice response a testament to their unity in Vam's innovative monitoring system. As Bell's space battle raged, Ty's ground battle mirrored his ferocity. Alone, she summoned the Force, her lightsaber flying into her hand to meet the Dringir's charge. With a leap fueled by determination, she severed the creature's head, her victory a silent echo to the battle above. Bell's strategy shifted, his maneuvers turning defensive as he channeled his mentor's wisdom into each move. For Loden, he whispered, his actions honoring his lost master. With a swift maneuver, he turned the tide of the battle, the innovator's lasers finding their mark on the Nihil's flagship. The enemy ship erupted in flames, a beacon of victory against the darkness. Bell and Ty, though apart, were united in their courage. Political Maneuvering and Discord In the Grand Chambers of the Jedi Council, tension hung heavy in the air. Chancellor So, her features marked with concern, addressed the assembled Jedi. The Republic Fair must shine as a beacon of hope, untouched by the Nihil shadow, she proclaimed resolutely. Delan Gios, a Jedi of unwavering commitment, concurred. We shall safeguard the fair. The Nihil will not undermine the foundations of our Republic. Elzarman, his expression clouded by recent events, spoke up. Yet, we must also heed the people's anxiety. Fear can be as destructive as any weapon. The discussion shifted as Samra, a diplomat with a keen intellect, offered a suggestion. Perhaps appointing a special liaison to the Togrudas could allay their fears. Jedi Ingle is adept in such matters. Delan considered the proposal, but it was Elzar who voiced his doubts. Ingle's forthright manner may not be the best fit. Alvar Chris, renowned for her leadership and bravery, could provide the needed solace. Chancellor So reflected on their words, her gaze steady. Your counsel is wise, Elzar. We shall extend an invitation to Marshal Chris whose reputation for valor and compassion precedes her. As the meeting drew to a close, Stellan approached Elzar, his gaze probing. Elzar, your unease is palpable. Tell me, what troubles your mind? Elzar hesitated, then spoke in a low voice. I carry the weight of the recent events personally. I fear I could have done more to prevent them. Stellan's hand rested gently on Elzar's shoulder, offering reassurance. You did all that was within your power, my friend. The Nihel bear the blame, not us. Let us look forward, for the past is beyond our control. Their conversation was abruptly interrupted by a commotion outside the chambers. Republic guards burst in, encircling a hooded figure. Chancellor So's features hardened as she addressed the unexpected visitor. Martian Rowe, you stand accused of complicity in the Nile's atrocities. Any attempt at deception will be met with swift and severe justice. Rowe's smile was cold and calculating. Chancellor, I assure you, my intentions are pure. I seek only to aid in eradicating the Nile and restoring peace to the galaxy. So's eyes narrowed, her skepticism clear. Your words hold little weight, Rowe. Nonetheless, we shall hear what you have to say, for now. The Valo Republic Fair The Valo Republic Fair was abuzz with excitement and color, a true testament to the unity and diversity of the Galactic Republic. The air was filled with the sounds of music and laughter, the scents of exotic foods wafting through the air, and the vibrant displays of art and innovation from across the sectors. At the heart of the fair stood the Starlight Pavilion, its domed structure glinting under the twin suns. Inside, treasures from the archives on Coruscant Deveron and the beacon itself were on display, drawing crowds of awestruck visitors. Younglings and elders alike marveled at the artifacts, 
their faces illuminated by the soft glow of history. Chancellor Lena So, resplendent in her robes of office, moved gracefully through the crowd. Her mastery of Tagruti language and customs was evident in every gesture and word. She approached Ragasa Elarakiovit, a prominent member of the Tagruta delegation, and they exchanged traditional greetings. Your presence honors us, Ragasa Elarak, Chancellor So said, her Tagruti flawless. And your fare honors the unity of our republic, Ragasa Elarak replied, her eyes reflecting pride and a hint of something deeper, perhaps the promise of a new alliance. The unity arc soared into the sky nearby, its 22 floating spheres representing the core founders of the Republic. As Chancellor So and Ragasa Elarek conversed, the Janivator, a vessel of exploration, stood proudly on display, symbolizing the Republic's commitment to discovery and progress. It was a beacon of hope, a sign that even in times of uncertainty, the Republic would continue to reach for the stars. Yet, not all was peaceful at the fair. In the shadows, whispers of dissent and the rustle of secret plans hinted at the presence of the Nihil. Their subterfuge was a dark cloud over the festivities, a threat that loomed ever closer. Stellan Dios, a Jedi Knight, watched over the fair with a vigilant eye. He knew the importance of this day, not just for the Republic, but for the future of all who believed in peace and justice. His gaze met that of Elzar Man, and in that silent exchange, they shared a resolve to protect the fair at all costs. As the day wore on, the fair continued to be a spectacle of joy and celebration, a momentary escape from the troubles that lay beyond. But for those who watched and waited, it was clear that the true test of the Republic's strength was yet to come. The festive lights of the fairgrounds cast long shadows where danger lurked. The Nihil, hidden among the revelers, waited for their moment to strike, their eyes fixed on Chancellor So and the heart of the Republic. Stellan's resolve and Elzar's guilt. The Med Bay was a flurry of activity, with Jedi and Republic guards rushing to and fro, tending to the wounded. Amidst the chaos, Stellan stood like a beacon of calm, his eyes scanning the room for Chancellor So. Finding her with a weary look but unharmed, he let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. Chancellor, are you all right? Stellan asked, his voice steady despite the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. Yes, thanks to you, Jedios, So replied, her voice carrying a strength that belied her exhaustion. Your actions today, they saved us all. Stellan offered a small, humble smile. It is my duty, Chancellor. The Jedi are sworn to protect the Republic. In another corner of the room, El Zarman leaned against a wall. His eyes closed as he tried to shut out the world. The guilt was a crushing weight on his chest, the memories of the day's events playing on a loop in his mind. Tyoric approached him cautiously. Elzar, you need to rest. You've done more than anyone could have asked for. Elzar's eyes snapped open, a haunted look in their depths. I caused this tie. The destruction, the fear. I tapped into something dark, and now I can't escape it. Ty placed a hand on his shoulder, her grip firm. You saved lives, Elzar. Remember that. The darkness. It doesn't define you. I used it, reveled in it, Elzar whispered, his voice breaking. How can I face the others knowing what I've done? By standing up and fighting back, Ty said resolutely. We face it together, Elzar. We make it right. Stellan joined them, his expression solemn. The Nile won't stop here. We need to be ready. Elzar met Stellan's gaze, a silent understanding passing between them. Then let's prepare, together. Meanwhile, the three stood united, the medbay doors burst open, revealing a group of younglings led by Master Indira. Their eyes were wide with a mix of fear and awe, having witnessed the horrors and heroics of the day. Master Jaius, Master Man. Indira addressed them, her voice firm yet gentle. These young ones have seen much today. They look to you for guidance. 
Stella knelt to meet the gaze of the nearest youngling, a girl no older than ten. Fear is natural, he said softly, but we must not let it control us. We are Jedi, and we stand together against the darkness. Elzar watched the interaction, the innocence in the youngling's eyes reminding him of what they were fighting for. He stepped forward, his resolve strengthening, and we learn from our mistakes, he added, his voice gaining confidence. We grow stronger, wiser, and more united. The younglings nodded, their expressions determined. It was a small moment, but it held the weight of the future, a future they would shape together. As the evening shadows began to stretch across the medbay, Stellan and Elzar, along with the other Jedi, transitioned to a nearby chamber where strategy and aid were being coordinated. The Nihil's threat loomed over them, but so did the unity of the Order. They were ready to face whatever came next, their resolve unbroken, their guilt transformed into a driving force for good. Together they would forge a path forward, guided by the light of the Force and the strength of their convictions. Battle in the Skies The skies above Valo were ablaze with the fiery dance of combat. Stellan Dios, lightsaber in hand, stood firm, his eyes scanning the horizon for the next wave of Nihil attackers. Beside him, Chancellor So clung to hope, her eyes fixed on the Jedi Master's valiant efforts. They're coming in fast, a voice shouted over the roar of engines and the crackle of blaster fire. Stellan nodded, his focus unbroken. Protect the Regassa and the Chancellor. I'll handle the front lines. As the Nihil ship swooped down, Elzarman urged his Sanvil into the fray, its movement synchronized with his own as he deflected incoming blasts with his lightsaber. We need to even the odds, he called out to Stellan, his voice a calm amidst the chaos. Stellan replied with a nod, his own blade humming as he parried a plasma bolt. On it, Elzar! Keep them off our tail! The battle raged on with Stellan and Elzar weaving a tapestry of light through the dark intentions of the Nile. Below them, Regasa Jovit stood protectively by Chancellor So's side. Can they hold them off? So whispered. Jovit's voice was steady. If anyone can, it's them. The Jedi are our best hope. Stellan turned his attention to the Nile attackers. A small band of them, led by a Twi'lek with a plasma burning in her hands, charged towards him. Stellan drew his lightsaber, its bright blade illuminating the darkening sky. With a final glance at the chaos unfolding around him, Stellan leapt into action, his lightsaber flashing as he confronted the Nile. The fate of Valo hung in the balance chapter. The skies above Valo were ablaze with the fiery dance of combat. Stellan Gaios, Lightsaber in hand, stood firm, his eyes scanning the horizon for the next wave of Nihil attackers. Stellan, they're coming in fast, a voice shouted over the roar of engines and the crackle of blaster fire. Stellan nodded, his focus unbroken. Protect the Chancellor and the Regassa. I'll handle the front lines. As the Nihil ships swooped down, Elzarman urged his connection with the Force to guide his actions his lightsaber a blur of blue as he deflected incoming blasts. We need to even the odds, he called out to Stellan, his voice a calm amidst the chaos. Stellan replied with a nod, his own blade humming as he parried a plasma bolt. On it, Elzar, keep them off our tail. The battle raged on with Stellan and Elzar weaving a tapestry of light through the dark intentions of the Nile. Below them, Chancellor So clung to hope, her eyes fixed on the Jedi's valiant efforts. Can they hold them off? She whispered to Regasa Jovit, who stood protectively by her side. Jovit's voice was steady. If anyone can, it's them. The Jedi are our best hope. Stellan turned his attention to the Nihil attackers. A small band of them, led by a Twi'lek with a plasma burning in her hands, charged towards him. Stellan drew his lightsaber, its bright blade illuminating the darkening sky. With a final glance at the chaos unfolding around him, Stellan leapt into action, his lightsaber flashing as he confronted the Nihil. 
The fate of Valo hung in the balance, and Stellan Gyos would stop at nothing to protect it. With swift and precise strikes, Stellan cut through the Nihil attackers, his lightsaber slicing through the darkness. Elzarman fought alongside him, their bond in the force amplifying their strength as they worked in tandem to hold off the enemy. As the battle raged on, Stellan's determination only grew, driven by his unwavering commitment to defend Valo and its people. Cunning Strategies In the dim glow of the Jedi Council Chamber, Stellan Gyos and Elzar Mann, accompanied by Senator Toon, plotted their next moves beneath the flickering stars of the holographic map dot. We must act swiftly, urged Stellan, his voice echoing with determination. The Nihil they knew wouldn't anticipate deception from the Jedi. Elzar, his thoughts weighed down by recent events, concurred. Orbelin has set the trap. The frequency is vulnerable and the bait is primed for Hetzel Prime. Senator Toon's concern shifted to the Cycler shipyards. Stellan assured him that, regardless of the Nile's choice, they would be ensnared. Should they target the shipyards, a Republic fleet would be waiting, while a strike on Hetzel Prime would result in their constant outmaneuvering. The Senator's eyes sparkled with admiration as he acknowledged Stellan's strategy as a masterful stroke. Meanwhile, in his lair, Martian Rowe delved into ancient texts, his fingers gliding over cryptic symbols. His whispered words betrayed his ambition. Power will be mine. The leveler will see that. Back at the Council, Elzar raised the possibility of capture and the potential value of information extraction from a Nihil captive. Stellan's reassuring hand on his shoulder emphasized their readiness for any outcome, bolstered by their connection to the Force. As their plans unfurled, the Jedi and the Senator wove a tapestry of cunning strategies. The Nihil, lured to Hetzel Prime, would believe they were delivering a decisive strike, only to find themselves outflanked from all angles. And should they choose the Cycler shipyards, they would encounter a deserted trap, their prey having vanished like smoke. In the vastness of space, Martian Rose Trap, armed with the knowledge of the Disruptor Field's potential, awaited its prey. The leveler, he believed, would bring the Republic to its knees, silencing their weapons and rendering them vulnerable. Chaos and Courage The air was thick with tension as the leveler's ominous hum filled the skies above Valo. Stellan Dio stood firm, his lightsaber casting a blue glow against the chaos. Beside him, Elzarman's brow was furrowed in concentration the weight of his visions pressing down on him. Stellan the Leveler. It's unlike anything we faced, Elzar said, his voice barely above a whisper. From a distance, Martian Rowe watched the battle unfold with a twisted smile, his eyes gleaming with a mix of excitement and calculation. He stood atop a rocky outcropping, the wind whipping his black hair into a frenzy as he gazed out upon the carnage below. The leveler, his secret weapon, was proving its worth, sowing fear and confusion among the Jedi and Republic forces. I will break them, Ro muttered to himself, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. I will show them all what I'm capable of. Lunadi approached Ro, her eyes reflecting the fires of battle. The Jedi are resilient, Ro. Do you think this will be enough to break them? Ro's smile faded into a grim line. It has to be. The leveler is the key to our victory. In the midst of the pandemonium, Belzedifar struggled to find his footing. The loss of Master Loden weighed heavily on him, but Endera's teachings echoed in his mind, giving him the strength to push forward. He remembered Loden's words of encouragement, the way his master had always stood tall in the face of darkness. It was Bell's turn now to be that beacon of light. Bell ignited his lightsaber and charged into the fray, his heart heavy but his resolve unshaken. Master Loden wouldn't want us to give in to fear, he whispered to himself. As Bell fought on, Elzar's voice cut through the noise, reaching Stellan amidst the bedlam. Stellan turned to face Elzar, their eyes meeting in a flash of understanding. The leveler is disrupting our weapons, Elzar shouted above the din of battle. 
We need a new strategy. Dylan nodded, his grip on his lightsaber tightening. Then we fight the old way with courage and determination. We adapt, we overcome. Elzar nodded back, his eyes alight with a fierce determination. We are Jedi. We do not falter. Together. They turned to face the onslaught, their lightsabers ready. The battle raged on, the clash of metal and the roar of combat filling the air. Bell moved through the chaos, his heart heavy but his resolve unshaken. He remembered Loden's teachings, the way his master had always stood tall in the face of darkness. It was Bell's turn now to be that beacon of light. Master Loden, I will make you proud, he whispered, leaping into battle with a newfound strength. The leveler continued to wreak havoc, but the Jedi and Republic forces fought with a renewed vigor, their courage undiminished by the fear that sought to cripple them.